Here is the head of that ignoble traitor, the dangerous and unsuspected Hastings. Well, the things that Sam and I tried to unearth about the character was his sense of humor, his sense of sarcasm, and just all and out fun he's having. So dear, I loved the man that I must weep. The character has a great sense of humor, and the play has large sections that are tongue in cheek. You know, someone brings someone's head in and uh, delivers it. Richard sobs over it, and in the case of our production, stabs it. <laughs> You know, theatre is only ever an inch away from absolute absurdity. You know, theatre is a house of cards. Well, it's such an incredible play to share around the world. And I think um, to be able to go and do classic work to so many different kinds of people and so many different kinds of cultures. Um, and I suppose the thing that I was most pleased about was that audiences came out in droves everywhere we went. And I'm always hearing, like, oh, theater's dying, and, you know, uh, and everyone's sort of being a bit moody about it. And I go, actually, why is the West End breaking box office records? Why is Broadway the single largest money-making uh, tourist attraction in the United States? Why did audiences come out all over the world to see us do Richard III? I think theater's alive and well. People are loving it everywhere. So it, it was actually kind of thrilling just to be able to go around the world and, and share you know, our greatest playwright, who's, you know, dealt with issues 400 years ago that we're still dealing with today. And we're, you know, we haven't got it right yet. What would it be like if you were born that way? If you had heard everyone call you every name in the book? If you had in your blood ambition and royalty, how long would it take you to overcome those disabilities that people made fun of? How long would it take you to turn those into strengths and not weaknesses? And he looked around the circle and he went, OK, here we go. Now is the winter of our discontent. Is it that what it's usually like behind the scenes? Do you, do you usually get the leading man sharing dressing rooms and things like that? Well, I don't know that you usually do, but I can tell you that in every production that I have done at the Old Vic, um, and that many productions I've done in lots of other circumstances, I always share a dressing room. Um, I, I, I can't, I mean, actually, it's a little weird for me right now because I'm doing a one-man show at the Old Vic. I'm in the dressing room that we always shared. I'm not in the star dressing room because that, I have no relationship with that room, but I have a relationship with, with the dressing room that I'm in because it's the one I've shared with so many companies uh, of, of actors um, in, in my years at the Vic. I, I, um, I'm a company man, so I'd much rather be in that room than in some quiet room all by myself. All the people that move on the sets and the props and some do costume changes and stuff are generally new people in each city, so they've, they've had to spend two days learning the play. Then we do a dress rehearsal, we run through the entire play, not for ourselves, but for our new backstage crew. And we learn a lot, too. Uh, like Kevin has to figure out how to use his voice in each space. I am myself alone. And one by one, I will dispatch the rest, calling myself a bad till I'm the best. I think everyone would rather be in your company when you take them out on a yacht and they go on sand dunes. You know, there's nothing worth having in this life if you can't share it, so I was happy to be able to invite everybody on, those, on all of those kind of excursions that we had together. There's like a big sort of stigma, I think, for Americans doing classical plays, and it's a it's a bullshit thing. Like that's not real. That you it, it feels like they've got some angle on it that we don't have, or you know, they and there or that there even is a they and an us. It's like so absurd. And what Sam and I wanted to do so much is simply saying that it doesn't matter where you're from and it doesn't matter how you sound. You can make Shakespeare come alive. I think it's important in any circumstance. Um, I, I'm always incredibly disappointed when I discover that somebody I might have admired is a complete jerk off. Um, but saying that, everybody has bad days, everybody has bad moments, um, and we should try very hard not to judge people on one experience or one moment in time. 
Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I've been so fortunate and lucky, um, particularly in this company, to have such a remarkable group of talented actors at very different levels of their own craft, and, and you know, some beginning their careers and some uh, very late in their careers. Um, and to be been able to capture that has just been very thrilling. His Majesty does call for you and for your grace and your What is effectively a barnstorming, old-fashioned in a way, going for the jugular, you know, playing a bad man, um, and doing it in such an unabashed and brutally frank way release the audience into into it, sort of not worrying about the play not not fretting about understanding but but taking pleasure in the acts of a bad man